is not good enough. Art and graft. I like that one. Get off the fence. Um, create, agitate, educate. Make history, forget the past. Respect the unexpected. Decide and conquer, fight the fluff. Or led by example. <laughs> no, 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 I don't mind that one. And then there's about another 30 that I'm not going to read through because there's too many. <laughs> this week I'm working on a campaign for d and It's a signage system um, of hand lettering. And it's quite experimental. I'm trying to incorporate all different styles of lettering into this particular work to give it a bit of energy because it's going to be seen on the street. So I'd worked with a designer um, a while back called Craig Oldham and he got in touch with me to say would I be keen to do a project for Dean AD. His idea was to use the signage system to kind of promote the whole campaign that was going on around Dean AD awards and it was going to be based in Shoreditch and the mood of the vibe he wanted was this kind of protest poster look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do as much as I can physically. All the work will be made physically off screen. It will be made with conventional materials, paint, pencils, tape, paper. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it all into, scan it all, put it all into Photoshop and use Photoshop a bit like a big silk screen machine. And really all I'm going to do on, on that is generally change, change colour possibly, change scale. And I'm going to try not to do too much tidying up because um, the tendency to when you go when you go on screen is to tidy up those mistakes, and I, I, I try very hard not to do that because I think the mistakes are interesting. For me personally, what I love seeing are the personalities behind the handmade posters. There'll be one little letter that they've done that's very particular to them, and I quite like that. So I might kind of steal some of the, those little peculiarities you see in other people's lettering for this to kind of give it a bit of variety. Which, Because in, in a way I think it's, it, it's unusual for me this job because like I said it's, my work's normally quite aesthetically pleasing and beautiful and crafted to a certain extent and this is, it doesn't really suit this subject so it has to just be a bit raw and a bit more anonymous but in the same way I'd like to bring that design sensibility to it so that it's yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tricky one. You want them to look cool and good, but you want them to look like they haven't been designed, which is, which is a tricky bit, I think. I like this brush because it makes nice blobby marks. <laughs> oh, how am I going to fit that in? You see, I'm going to squeeze it in there. So there's something quite nice about that when it doesn't fit and so you have to make the lettering suddenly really tiny. That is kind of what you would do if you weren't a graphic designer. <laughs> so it's a little bit trying to get... Whatever looks good, I'll, I'll do. I don't mind if it, if, if it fits to, um, to kind of any rules or whatever. No, they wouldn't let me do graphic design when I went to college because I wasn't neat enough. It's funny because now I would love it because it was all hand rendered type. Um, but I really couldn't use a rotary pen and I couldn't, I just couldn't keep things. I'm a bit slapdash. <laughs> Aji G. Aji G. I forgot the T. I'll have to add that in later. Aji. Aji Gate. It's not good. So, you know, what I can do is just pick, I'll just add that T in down there. <laughs> <laughs> I always say that lettering is really nice to do because it's, it's much easier for me to write than it is to make a picture and it's, it's not so much about thinking if anything it's about not thinking and trying to just get into the moment of just appreciating I suppose just drawing each letter so it's, it's a nice place to go to and as I say, sometimes you have good days and bad days, but it just the, the, it just doesn't happen, and you make some really bad letters. And other times it, it just works. So you know, it's, no, it's very enjoyable, of course. But 
there is a little conversation going on in your head all the time when you're making work. And for me, it's always like a little battle between left brain and right brain, and the, the left brain is trying to say you can't do that because that's not going to look right. And the right brain is, is being a bit more adventurous and saying, why don't you just give it a try? And, okay, so we don't normally, you know, you don't normally put an X in the middle of an O, but maybe that would look quite good. You know, so you, it's that little battle between those two hemispheres in your brain. And it, I always say I'm trying to get back into that um, childlike mentality where anything goes, and if you want to make something big or small or or wrong, you should you should you should follow that. To keep your interest, especially to keep my interest, and for me it's important to keep moving to the unknown of things I don't know how to do or I mean that's what makes it interesting. If you have to do the same old thing all the time, which is quite often what happens in commercial illustration where you're asked to do similar things. It's quite stifling and it's not really the route for um, innovation, I don't think. Sometimes if something doesn't look right, which this didn't, rather than just saying, oh, that didn't work, I will sometimes just work it to the point of destruction, <laughs> just to make sure. <laughs> or I'll do something um, that's very right brain. It's a very right brain saying, don't give up, you know, maybe you can turn that into something. And maybe it just needs a bit more energy or something in it, or you never know, you might, something might come out of it, something might not, but it's worth the risk. The destruction. <laughs> the, you know, it's just playing with words, really, at the end of the day. We're playing with words and you can a different person will read them in a different way and some people will see it as a positive message, some people will see it as a perhaps, you know, slightly antagonistic. Some of them are, some of the messages are slightly antagonistic and, but that's going to pr provoke reaction, I suppose, and that's linking it back to the original beef of having a little bit of protest in there, but it's less protest and more dialogue, I would say. The copy is quite good for focusing people, I think. I think it will really kind of keep them sharp and I think hopefully it will create a really great atmosphere of this kind of talking and chatting and just having these great kind of little thoughts in your head as you do judge or as you do look around the work. It'd be great to suddenly just walk down the street and you know you're in D&D &D land just for that day. So.